Hello everyone and welcome to Uncivil Law, where we learn through the misfortunes of others. If you're enjoying our legal education content, please remember to subscribe, it helps the channel grow. For today's case, we're dealing with a situation where the Colorado State Police came upon a car accident victim. This person had hit the guardrail and had severely damaged their car. And the person acted strangely. They acted confused and bewildered, like maybe that they'd just been in a traffic accident and maybe they had some sort of head trauma or something. They, they weren't able to answer questions properly or, or able to really understand what was going on. So, you know, if you came to this, this scene of this guy in this, this, this accident where they hit the guardrail and their car was seriously damaged and they were confused and bewildered, you might draw the conclusion this person had some sort of brain injury or some sort of problem. But the, what the police decided what this person had was a DUI. And then they arrested the person and completely neglected to treat them and their injuries surmounted as a result. So we are suing the police for failure to treat this guy after being arrested, even though they did a blood draw, even though they did an alcohol test, they weren't able to find any drugs or any alcohol in his system, uh, and, but they, were, they, they were, didn't treat this guy for his obvious medical need. So that was super fun. Let's get started with this. Yeah, no, you guys thinking head injury? No, nope. no, nope, no, nope. it's none of those things, it's DUI. Despite the lack of the alcohol, despite the lack of drugs in the blood tests, to just not treat them for hours and hours and hours. While driving home from work late at night on May the 2018, Schmitz became disoriented and crashed his car into a guardrail near Fair Play, Colorado. He had a traffic accident and in a guardrail. So, you know, just after midnight, Trooper Evans arrived at the scene and found Schmidt in his car. Trooper Evans quickly realized that Schmidt was very confused, didn't know where he was going or where he was coming from. Trooper Schmidt, Trooper Evans over here thinks that Schmidt is confused and doesn't know what's going on. Having just been in a traffic accident, having hit a guardrail, must be a DUI, I guess. No other possible reason he might be confused or bewildered. In directing Schmitz to get out of the car, Trooper Evans had to repeatedly tell Schmitz to unbuckle his seatbelt. When exiting the car, Schmitz closed the door on his arm and had to use the car for support, having trouble standing. Moving slowly, Schmitz stated that he was waiting for his head to get out. Must be drugs. Must be a DUI. Can't think of any other reasons that this guy might be behaving slightly strangely. Hmm. <laughs> Apparently suspecting that Schmitz was drunk, <sighs> Trooper Evans conducted three field sobriety tests. Schmitz failed all three. Trooper Evans recorded his observations of several indicia of impairment, including slow hand movements, confusion, inappropriate answers to simple questions, and using the vehicle to exit. Well, you know, Tro Trooper, Trooper Evans over here has come upon the scene of a traffic accident where this guy has hit the guardrail, and he's having trouble understanding the officer's questions and having trouble standing under his own power and having trouble trouble following directions like you need to unbuckle your seatbelt and when he finally does he closes the door on his own arm and he's having trouble standing and trooper evans here hero to the cause concludes it must be drugs it must be a dui the the, the, the that that dented up guardrail has nothing to do with any of this okay that's that's great trooper evans press on while at the jail, Schmitz provided a urine sample and agreed to a blood test. He was probably very suggestible at this point, one would think. And a drug recognition ev expert evaluation. His test results came back negative for illicit drugs and showed a blood alcohol con concentration of zero. Okay, so we've done a blood draw. We've done an alcohol analysis. We find zero illicit drugs in his blood and we find a blood alcohol level of zero. Maybe not DUI, maybe something else. His urinalysis, however, did show something suspect. His urinalysis showed large qualities of blood in his urine. Hmm. Despite his symptoms, no one at the jail provided any kind of medical care, assistance, or monitoring. Okay, this just gets better and better. Trooper Evans over here has arrested this guy and booked him on DUI. And he says, 
he says he he consents to a blood draw on a urine sample. Now, one one might quibble with how consensual this can be, because how knowing, intelligent, and voluntary can the consent be at this point? But let's blow past that issue completely about the knowing, intelligent, and voluntary waiver of his rights. Let's just blow completely past that issue and just go to it happened, and the blood draw showed absolutely no drugs of any kind, and the alcohol test showed a blood alcohol concentration of zero. Were there anything abnormal about the results? Yes, as a matter of fact, there was something abnormal about the results. There was very large quantities of blood in his urine. Now, I am not an EMT. I am not a doctor. Yet, I think that I know that, you know, well, here's what I do know for sure. Large quantities of the blood in urine is atypical. That is not something you normally expect. So without any medical training of any kind, I might reasonably draw the conclusion that this presents a problem. And maybe the complete lack of drugs and the complete lack of uh, blood of alcohol and maybe the blood in the urine, maybe that suggests I should do something about that. But I'm Trooper Evans. I'm not going to do anything about any of these issues. I'm in absolutely no way going to see that he has medical treatment. Okay, that's just great. Now, some of you guys might be right about now thinking to yourself, wait, do the police have a duty to this guy? Yes, yes they do. Now, you might be aware that we've covered recently cases like DC uh, versus Warren, or Castle Rock versus Gonzalez, or Deshawnee versus Winnebago, that the police do not have a duty to people in general. That's true, the police do not have a duty to people in general. However, they do have duties to people that are in their custody or control, such as this guy. And so we're not going to take care of this guy. So, you know, that might be a legal problem. Yes. Schmitz's wife picked him up at 10 a.m. the next morning. So for 10 hours, at least, he had no treatment of any kind. One of the staff medical providers advised Ms. Schmitz to take her husband to the emergency room immediately. Then why didn't you do that? Which she then did. And Schmitz remained at the hospital for three days. So, you know, could have been better. Addressing the State Tort Claim Act, the appellants argue that Colorado's Governmental Immunity Act bars the claim. The government did nothing wrong, and if they did, we're not responsible, you can't sue us, we're the government. So we have no duty to you. Yay. Specifically, the appellants assert that the act completely immunizes public entities and immunizes public employees from suit unless they engage in willful and wanton conduct. The appellants maintain that Schmitz had failed to sufficiently allege willful and wanton conduct in his complaints. Okay, from that they argue that Colorado had not waived its sovereign immunity regarding the claim against Trooper Evans, thus depriving the district court of subject matter jurisdiction. Yeah, so this is just all kinds of fun and interesting. So Colorado doesn't say, yeah, we didn't do anything wrong. They say we're immune because the Colorado State Police work for the state of Colorado. So they work for the sovereign the state level sovereign. And so you can't sue us because we have immunity from all the things because we're the sovereign. We can do no wrong. So, hey, the fact that, you know, there was blood, blood in his urine, we're not responsible for that. Why are you after us? Super fun. Good times. The Colorado Immunity Act provides the following limited sovereign immunity to public employees. A public employee shall be immune from liability in any claim for injury which lies in tort or could lie in tort, and which arises out of an act or omission of such employee occurring during the performance of his duties and within the scope of his employment, unless the act or omission causing such injury was willful and wanton. So any sort of tort, like assault, battery, neglect, negligence, we're not responsible for any of that as long as we did it within the scope of our duty, unless we willfully and wantonly did it. So willfully is we did it on purpose. Wantonly would be basically we did it with complete lack of care. That That is wanton is essentially uh, complete. I don't give an F. That's basically wanton. So intentional is I'm trying to do it. And wanton is uh, I don't care at all that this is this is hurting, hurting you. So not only do I intend to do it, I don't care that, that I'm doing. I don't care about your problems. So, yeah, that's basically willful and wanton in short. The act also grants sovereign immunity to public entities. A public entity shall be immune from liability all claims for injury which lie in tort or could lie in tort except otherwise provide. So not only is the officer immune, the governmental entities are also immune unless they try to do it to you on purpose. Fun! In the district court, Colorado moved to dismiss the tort claim 
under Rule 12b-1 for failure of stat subject matter jurisdiction, arguing the Colorado's Immunity Act barred the claim. Even if we did something wrong to you, it doesn't matter because we're the sovereign and we're special. The Immunity Act implicates federal court's subject matter jurisdiction because Colorado treats sovereign immunity as teach the statutory immunity as a sovereign immunity. Though not exactly the same as the 11th Immunity, the Immunity Act nevertheless gives tort liability immunity. The government contends that the allegations in Schmitz's complaint support only a simple claim of negligence. It's just, just simple negligence. It's not nothing more than that. And the district court erred in concluding the allegations sufficiently alleged willful and wanton conduct. So they just, they just argued simple negligence, not that we are really, really cruel. Although at close call, we agree with the district court that Schmitz has sufficiently alleged that Evans acted willfully and wantonly. The Immunity Act fails to define willful and wanton, but the, California, but the Colorado Supreme Court has recently clarified that this term means something more than mere negligence. To be willful and wanton, the public employee's conduct must have exhibited a conscious disregard of danger. So the district court said, you know what? We think that this might be willful and wanton. We think that this might be more than simple negligence. You know, simple negligence is you have a duty and you, you failed in the duty you know, and you you failed in the duty in a negligent way, right? It doesn't require much to have negligence. Negligence is pretty easy. Your standard car accident is negligence. You have a duty to not wreck, you got into a wreck. That's negligence, right? So it's like, well, they, they stay at they stay Colorado. It's like, well, all they allege is negligence. And the, the court says, no, they alleged a little bit more. They alleged a little bit more than negligence. They, they said that you missed several obvious telltale clues that might be a problem. All right. Applied in this case, we must decide whether Trooper Evans over here, hero to the cause, exhibited a conscious disregard of the danger Schmitz faced absent immediate medical attention. Well, let's see. Um, should the trooper, did, or more, more to the point, not should, but did the trooper consciously disregard the danger of, of to him absent immediate medical attention? I don't know, ma'am. I, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just a simple country lawyer with no particular medical attention. But you know, the blood in the urine would be a pretty big clue to me, I would think. Not to Trooper Evans, though. That is apparently not a clue of any kind. It's not enough to conclude that Trapper, Trooper Evans should have realized the danger. Yeah, we need more. We need not that he should have, that he actually did. And we must make the determination based solely on allegations in the complaint. So, Trooper Evans over here, hero to the cause. A the 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 patron the patron the patron example to all law enforcement ev officers everywhere, a man a man of a hero of all seasons. It's not enough that he simply was negligent. He 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 has to show a conscious disregard. So how are we going to allege that Trooper Evans over here wasn't merely just neglectful, and in coming to conclusions he he kind of you know showed active disregard. How are we going to come to this conclusion? All right, well here's how we're going to come to that conclusion. The complaint alleges the following. Trooper Evans found plaintiff in a very confused state. Trooper Evans observed that plaintiff did not know where he was going or where he came from, and plaintiff just kept repeating, just up the road. Yeah. After he asked Schmitz to step out of the vehicle, Trooper Evans had to repeat specific instructions to unbuckle his seatbelt several times before he exited unsteadily using the vehicle for support. Almost like he's just been in a car accident. What do I know? When exiting, the car door closed on his arm. Schmidt stated that he was waiting for his head to get out because it hurt. I don't even know what that means. The fact that I don't know what it means might be a clue. Trooper Evans reported observing indicia of impairment, including slow hand movements, confusion, inappropriate answer to simple questions, and using the vehicle to exit. Almost like he's been in a car wreck. Trooper Evans never offered Schmidt any medical treatment or assistance whatsoever. Trooper Evans did not smell any alcohol on Schmitz. Depend Defendant Evans indicated on the Colorado State Patrol impairment ex ex examination form, the only odor he noted was herbal tea. So Schmitz didn't think alcohol. He didn't smell alcohol. He didn't smell marijuana or other drugs, right? He, uh, what, what drug did he smell? Tea. Herbal tea. Yeah. Earl, Earl Grey, maybe. Hot. Captain McCard style. Must be the alcohol that I can't smell. Way to go, Trooper Evans. That's 
just really great de deductive reasoning. You know, it's almost like police should, you know, in some way be detectives and maybe think about stuff and be like, hmm, what conclusions could I draw from this? Complete lack of alcohol and the fact that, you know, this guy has hit the uh, hit the guardrail. He's acting a little weird. Don't know, man. Must be the alcohol I can't smell. Way to go. Good work. The government's theory why they're not responsible for all this lies on a faulty assumption. They assume that if Trooper Evans reasonably believed that Schmitz was intoxicated, either with alcohol or some other substance, then failure to seek medical care for Schmitz couldn't have admitted to willful and wanton conduct. So if they really thought it was alcohol, then the failure to treat is totally reasonable because alcohol poisoning isn't a problem. We reject that premise. Suppose that Smiths had been unconscious when Trooper Evans arrived and that several empty prescription bottles lay scattered throughout the car. In that scenario, Trooper Evans could reasonably believe a drug overdose had caused the condition. Fair, you know, you find an unconscious guy with a lot of empty pill bottles, maybe it's the pill bottles. That's a reasonable conclusion. But the deduction would not excuse Trooper Evans if he failed to seek immediate medical care. In other words, Trooper Evans may have consciously disregarded the danger to health regardless of whether he believed the intoxication was the cause. That Trooper Evans may have actually believed that intoxication doesn't end the inquiry into whether he acted willfully or wantonly. So the court points out, you know, kind of the obvious. Or it's like, okay, we'll take what you believe as a given. We'll take that you think alcohol despite the lack of any sign of alcohol, despite the lack of empty beer cans, despite the lack of, uh, despite the lack of alcohol in his breath, despite the only scent that you deterred it, deterred was that dangerous, dangerous herbal tea life, dangerous, dangerous tea land, you know, despite the lack of any sort of blood alcohol, you know, problems, we're going to nevertheless conclude you thought alcohol. Okay, fine. Given that premise, um, why didn't you think that he needed medical attention? If you really thought he was that far gone, do you, do you not realize that alcohol poisoning can be a problem? Maybe it requires a look at that. Just a, just a suggestion. You know, if you really thought alcoholism was the problem, despite, despite the 0. 0.000 blood alcohol level, if you thought, you know, despite the zero blood alcohol level, he had an intoxication problem with alcohol, which seems like a strange conclusion to draw, but okay, let's go with that. Despite the fact that he registered zero on the blood alcohol test, if you really thought it was alcoholism, then why didn't you get him help? Because clearly he needs help. I mean, that's the conclusion you draw and then you failed to act on your own conclusion. Maybe you just don't give a care. Maybe that's wanton. Yeah. For the foregoing reasons, we affirm in part, reverse in part, and remand for further consist considerations consistent with this opinion. Thus, that brings us to the end of our discussion of the case of Donald William Schmitz versus the Colorado State Patrol. In this case, Mr. Schmitz got into an automobile accident. He hit he hit the barrier, he hit the uh, barrier, and he he was injured. And a police officer came upon the scene of the accident. Hooray! However, the the police officer. You know, despite not detecting signs of alcohol, despite not finding beer cans or prescription bottles, despite everything, thought, you know, the only reason that this guy is a little is acting confused or doesn't know where he is or doesn't know where he's going and, and needs repeated help with with getting out of the car and needs to be able to uh, use the car itself to help himself out of the car. The only reason this must be true is because of alcohol. And then having conducted the blood test and a, a alcohol screening, we found zero drugs and zero alcohol. It must be the alcohol though, despite the blood in the urine and then fails to get any treatment of any kind. And he does have a duty to this guy because he's under his custody or control. And maybe this represents a willful state. Maybe he was consciously directly disregarding an ongoing threat that any reasonable idiot should have been able to conclude. And so maybe he can sue for the damages. So, the, the governmental immunity is denied. It will go back to trial to figure out what the responsibility is. And for the moment, at least, that brings us to the end of the discussion of this case. Thank you so much for being part of the Uncivil Law family. If you enjoyed this legal education content, please hit the subscribe button. It really helps the channel grow. We appreciate your continuing support. Until later, my friends, cheers and goodbye.